For easy to grow house plants, bromeliads are among the best. And today we have Calvin Owen of Tennessee Tropicals going to fill us in a little bit about successfully growing bromeliads in oh, the home. For sure. Uh, bromeliads come in all different shapes and sizes, uh, small, large, medium, colors, you name it. Right. Um, they're all members of the pineapple family. And this is a variegated pineapple uh, variety named Ivory Coast. Uh, now this is going to be a larger bromeliad eventually. So you want to make sure you have a lot of space. Typically bromeliads want very bright light. Uh, maybe even a little bit of sunlight indoors. Mm -hmm. Allow them to dry out in between waterings. They tolerate neglect like no other. That makes them very easy. In the wild where these grow, they're growing up in the treetops. So to give people a little bit of perspective, you know, they're, they attach themselves uh, in the crotch of a tree or up on a tree branch. So they're up there in that bright light, mm -hmm. but the only water they get is what falls, what falls out the of the sky. Yeah. Right, uh, a lot of them are epiphytes uh, like yeah. this Tillandsia. Uh, this is Tillandsia diariana. Um, this plant normally doesn't grow in the soil. It grows on a rock or a tree branch, uh, and it just kind of hangs out. It gets whatever water it gets from the rain that falls. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes most bromeliads uh, able to tolerate neglect inside the house. Right. So a very forgiving house plant. Now these two that are down here in the very front, are, are particularly interesting. They're almost flat to the ground. Yes, uh, both of these are cryptanthus. Mm -hmm. uh, this variety is absolute zero um, because of the frosty looking leaves. Uh, and this variety is Elaine. Uh, and this variety is special to me. I had to uh, acquire this one because it's named uh, after my mom. Very my nice, Elaine. very nice. So um, on the pineapple, let's talk about it for just a minute. You said this grows larger. Um, obviously, this is just a small starter plant, but how big can we expect something like this to get? Uh, this particular type of pineapple, if it's happy, you can expect it to get two to three feet across, two to three feet tall. Uh, so it would be another plant that would be good for a corner spot. For sure. Whereas uh, some corner, of these smaller Maybe even ones, up on a pedestal. Right. Uh, where it gets a little bit of sunlight. Yeah. And where these leaves can kind of droop a little bit. Right, and curl around. Yeah. Uh, that makes the best look. Uh, and eventually, if it's very happy, you'll get a nice pink pineapple from it. Mm -hmm. The thing that I like about this one in particular, I know when I was a kid, I used to cut the top off of a pineapple every once in a while and, you know, grow one from the, the green part of the top of the mm -hmm. pineapple. Mm -hmm. Spiny. Right. Very spiny. Right. Not very friendly. Is, and this yeah. has no spines. This is a thornless variety that makes it even uh, cooler. Even mm -hmm. Well, we looked at some really pretty little tabletop sized bromeliads, but these are specimen plants For that sure. you've got up uh, here. More landscape sized bromeliads. Uh, they would do really well indoors in a sunroom. Right. Uh, um, or outdoors in the summer in a shady, shady place. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice plants for containers out on your patio. Yeah. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure you have bright light in the winter to uh, overwinter. To them. overwinter them, sure. So they, but they would make great uh, patio specimens on a shady patio or maybe with a little morning sun. Right, a little morning sun or very, very late afternoon sun, uh, but they prefer to be shaded. They just come in so many different forms and colors. Uh, I mean, from kind of silvery gray to these beautiful deep burgundies. Um, and even without a bloom or anything, they're just such spectacular architectural plants. Right, they add a lot of structure. Uh, some of them have smooth leaves, some of them have spiny leaves, uh, very upright, mm -hmm. uh, interesting conversation pieces. Yeah. Uh, even when they're not in bloom. Well, and then speaking of blooms, this, this bloom actually is finished, but this is the seed pod on this plant, correct? Right, this is uh, Ursulea. Uh, it's a fairly rare uh, bromeliad, very spiny. Um, the flowers were blue when it was in bloom. Uh -huh. uh, now the seed pods have a nice frosting on them uh, and they'll eventually make very large berries. Right. Uh, but with bromeliads, with all bromeliads, once they bloom, that's the end of it. Right. Um, so she's making pups to be her successors, but uh, this is the final hurrah for that individual bromeliad. Right, and that's something we, we may want to explore in just a little bit of detail. And, and like you just explained so well, once the main, what they call the mother plant, flowers, 
then that plant slowly over a period of several months dies off. But it almost always has made a pup that comes up beside it, sometimes two or three, and those will take over most as the yeah. mother plant That's the dies next off. generation. Yeah, that's uh, the next generation. So you, you'll always have more right. uh, over time. Yeah, and if you start with one, you may end up with two or three or four Right. You know, two or three years down the road. Easily, easily. Uh, each time they flower. Easily. One more really beautiful plant down here at our feet before we go is this really nicely variegated form. This is a variegated Varigia. Uh It has a very nice shape form, mm -hmm. variegated leaves. Uh, when it blooms, it has a long spike uh, that stands up about five feet tall. And wow. It's bright orange red. That's uh, beautiful. But it's really nice already, uh, and even nicer once it blooms. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.